We're going to see how to use internationalization support in a native script Angular application. So what this means is, well, say I was to release an application that only supported English. Because I speak English, I write English, that's what I'm comfortable in. How much of the world am I neglecting uh, by releasing this app in only English? I mean, not everyone in the world speaks English. There's Mandarin, Spanish, and many other languages. Uh, so what you want to do to get the most out of your application and reach the most people is you want to add multiple language support to your application that's done through internationalization uh, so we're going to be seeing how to do that we're going to be using a nifty library called ng2 translate or angular translate uh, this library was available for angular js back in the day it's also available for angular uh, so we're not calling it angular 2 anymore it's just called angular um, but it's a very useful library uh, and it'll actually make your application a whole lot better. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with our terminal. We're going to create a new native script project. We're going to say TNS create translate project hyphen hyphen ng for Angular. And then navigate into that project and we're going to add uh, our build platforms. So we're going to say TNS platform add Android. And if you're on a Mac using Xcode, uh, you can actually add the iOS platform as well. So TNS platform add iOS. So this library that we're going to add in order to do our translations for us, it's called Angular Translate and it's through NPM. So what we can do is we can say NPM install ng2 translate hyphen hyphen save to save it to our package.json file. All right, so with Angular Translate installed, there's several ways to handle your translation files. We're actually going to be using files rather than hard coding it within our JavaScript or TypeScript or whatever you're using. Uh, so what that means is we need to define where we're going to save these translations. So for this particular project, we're going to save it to a, a directory called i18n, and that's going to be in the app folder. So if I open my current project and I have my finder window up, uh, this is what the project looks like. We're going to go into app and we're going to create a folder called i18n. And this folder will hold several different JSON files, one JSON file for every language we wish to support. Uh, so let's go ahead and create those files now. So we're going to say, uh, and you can do it any way you want. I'm going to create these files to the terminal. I'm going to say touch app i18n. I'm going to say en.json. So en. Uh, would be the abbreviation for the specific language. So I'm not just picking this at random. This is the actual uh, English language placeholder. Uh, just figure out what placeholder you need to use for the language you wish to support. So that's EN. I'm also going to support Spanish. So that's ES. So I have my two JSON files. They don't contain anything as of right now, but they are there. So with those files created, let's go ahead and open up this project using a text editor or IDE. I'm going to be using Atom by GitHub. So I'm going to say Atom uh, dot. I'm going to open up one of those translation files. So I'm going to start with English. Inside of this English JSON file, I'm going to add some JSON. I'm going to say hello. So this is the placeholder value. Uh, and it, since this is English, it'll be hello. That's what it'll be translated into. And for a goodbye, again, that's a placeholder value. It could be whatever whatever you want. It doesn't need to match the actual value. Uh, but we're going to say goodbye. We're going to match it. And save. Now we're going to go to the Spanish translation file. And we're going to do the following. We're going to say hello, because it has the, the placeholder has to match across your languages. Uh, we're going to say hola. And then goodbye. It's going to be adios and save. So we do have two languages. It's very simple. Our application isn't going to do a whole lot. It's just going to demonstrate that, hey, we can translate between two different languages um, and what, what they look like. Now what we want to do is we want to bootstrap that Angular Translate library into our project. And that can be done through the app.module.ts file. So inside of this file, we need to import a few things. So first of all, this library requires the HTTP module. So we need to do import native script, clean it up, native script, HTTP module from native script angular slash HTTP. We also need 
uh, to get the HTTP service, which is part of Angular. So we're going to say import HTTP from Angular slash HTTP. And then we need to import a few uh, components from the Angular Translate library. So we can say import translate module, translate loader, and translate static loader from ng2 translate. All right, so we do have the basics imported now. Um, it doesn't look like it errored. It, it, that, that little dot went away. Um, we need to now create uh, where our files are going to be located. We need to tell this uh, translate loader where to find our translation files. So right below all of our imports, let's do the following. We're going to say export function create translate loader, and it could be really named whatever you want. We're going to pass in that HTTP service, and we're going to return a new translate static loader we're passing an HTTP because it's a requirement of this of this library and we're going to give it a path on where to find these files so we're saying that it's going to be found in the i18n uh, so by default the app directory is the root path so it's i18n uh, and then the files will be in .json format perfect uh, we're not done yet we need to continue down the line here we need to add it to the ng module block uh, so what we need to do is, first of all, well, we need to go to the import section. Let's clean this up a bit. And we need to add a few more lines. Oops. We can add native script, HTTP module, and we can add translate module dot for root. And this is where we can pass in our configurations. So we can say, provide translate loader use factory and that's going to be create translate loader the one that we had just created up top in the export function and then finally the dependencies um, are HTTP so at this point in time our angular translate library is now bootstrapped uh, we know where to find our uh, translation files. Um, you can have as many, again, as many of them as you want in there. Now what we need to do is we need to figure out how to actually translate something. Uh, so let's go ahead and open up our app.component.ts file. This is going to be a single page application. Uh, so what we can do is we can remove a lot of the stuff that's already inside of this app component file. At the top, what we want to do is we want to import a few dependencies. So we want to say import translate service from ng2 translate um, so this will actually allow us to do translations we also want to be able to determine what language our mobile device is actually running so we don't want to just guess or let the user choose on their own it might be a good idea to well we it might be a good idea to let them choose in the end but we also want to default it to their natural language so we can do that by importing the following so import star as platform from and this is a native script uh, component here platform go ahead and save it so let's go ahead and add a public variable let's call it uh, language it's going to be a string and then our constructor we're going to inject translate service And we can say this dot language equals platform dot device dot language. So this will get the actual language. And a lot of times uh, when you see this, it'll actually be something like en dot us. Uh, what we need to do is we need to remove the hyphen us. Um, there's a, there's tons of other combinations. We only want the first part of it, and we'll see how to do that right now. But we're going to say this dot translate dot use default lang and by default we're going to use English and I might have a error in there translate service it's actually going to be set 
set default length. Sorry. All right, so we're defaulting to English. So if the user's device is set to say German, well, I don't have a German translation set. So by default, if one doesn't exist, it'll use the English. The next line, we're going to say this.translate.use. This is what we're telling the device to use now or to try to use. So we're going to say uh, platform.device.language. And we need to split it up by hyphen. So we can say split. Um, and this will create an array. And we want the first part of that array. And we can save it. So our TypeScript file is done as of now. So we need a very basic UI just to demonstrate our example here. Uh, so I'm going to go to my app component.html file. What we're going to do is we're going to wipe this out. I'm going to add an, an action bar. I'm going to call it uh, translate example. And we're going to have a stack layout. This stack layout is going to have a horizontal alignment to center, and it's going to have a vertical alignment uh, to center. So whatever we put, it's going to be centered on the screen. We're going to have a label and one button. So we're going to say label. The text is going to read language. And we're going to specify whatever language that language variable was set to inside of our TypeScript. We're going to give it a class of h1, so it'll be larger text, and close it off. Finally, we have our button, and this is the button that will be translated. We're going to say text equals, we're going to say hello. So remember, that's a placeholder value that we set inside of our translation files. We're going to use a pipe, translate. And then we're going to say, we can just say something else. We'll say slash. And we'll say goodbye. Pipe it again, translate. Go ahead and give it a class equals uh, button btn primary. And close it off. So it's very basic. We're just going to have a button that says hello slash goodbye in whatever language our device is set to. So at this point in time, we can give it a shot. I'm going to open up my terminal again. I'm going to say TNS emulate iOS. You can use Android if you want as well. So as you can see on my simulator here, I do have a language. It's using the device language. It's saying that it's EN for English, uh, which is what my device is set to. And then the button is translated as hello, goodbye. So what we want to do now is we want to change that language and see if it changes the translation. So what we can do is we can go to our settings inside of our device or simulator. In this case, it's iOS. I'm going to change the language and region. Uh, language and region is going to be changed to uh, Spanish. See if that Spanish US is good enough for us. Let's let's hopefully it is. So we're going to exit out of the settings, and we're going to go to translate project again. And you can see this time the language changed uh, to ES US. Just like I said, it would have a hyphen in there. Uh, we only care about the ES part, but it did translate uh, to hola and adios instead of hello goodbye. Uh, just to confirm, we're going to change it back one more time. We're going to change it back to English. And it changed to English US again. So um, very, very powerful stuff here. If you want to add a, a different language for all the major languages in the world, uh, maybe you don't know those languages. Maybe you hire a translation service for you. I wouldn't use Google Translate. That tends to be very poor. Um, but you can reach a whole lot more people when it comes to distributing your application.